Coming up on the Code Bet Daily, it is the Alex and Stats Guy show once again for episode 138. I take a victory lap about Angus Sheldrick. He's my boy. Stats Guy, what have you got for us today? Looking at Steve Smith to bounce back in the second test and a, a different guy to win, win with, uh, other than Djokovic. <laughs> nice. Apparently, England have the mental advantage despite being 1-0 down in the ashes. And I, of course, I yell about that because I don't get angry about stupid stuff like this. Oh, never. It's the Code Bet Daily. It's really good. And it's coming your way right now. Welcome to the Code Bet Daily, Monday, June 26th. All day. Early recording here on the Code Bet Daily. It is pre 9 a.m. I have got Stats Guy up and about at 8 55 a.m. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, for this here shenanigan. It is episode 138 of the Code Bet Daily. Of course, I am up and about after Saturday night's events. We'll do a victory lap and about that after uh, the intros. The Stats Guy's here. It's just, well, it's the Alex and Stats Guy show once again. How are we, Stats Guy? It is. We're holding down the ship again. Uh, you're very excited for AEW or whatever wrestling thing is on today. But yeah, so I'm up early. We've got a good, good early start. It's good. Mate, uh, one of the ultimate wrestling dream matches will be taking place today between <laughs> Brian Danielson and Kazuchika Okada. If you know you anything go. about wrestling, you will understand why I'm extremely, extremely excited about today's <laughs> events. But I actually wasn't thinking about that. Uh, I was more thinking about my cap for my beloved Sydney Swans put in 200 up on the West Coast Eagles on Saturday afternoon. Some might have said it's boring. Some might have said it was calamitous. I enjoyed myself because despite West Coast being pitiful, I don't think anyone expected to see the Sydney Swans put 200 no. points on the board. Yeah. Shout out to you, Stats Guy. Your best bet of the weekend for the Sydney Swans to score the most points this most round points. of the AFL <laughs> was never in doubt. I believe I'd have to go back and check it. I think the Swans were the only team to get over 100 on the weekend, but they went and did it yeah. by getting 200. I, so. To be honest, I thought they would get around the 120 mark, not the 200, but still cashed in on that yeah, one. Yeah. I thought 140 was on, and uh, shout out to NRL host uh, Phil East. Shot the lights out of the tips up until Sunday in the NRL. Sunday was just calamitous. It was a bit we hard. We did yeah. find the Raiders. Uh, he was like, oh, yeah, 150s on. I was like, nah, man, 200s on. He texted me back <laughs> going, yeah, 200s on. Yeah. But quick shout out, Angus Sheldrick, 25 possessions at the $9.50 I know. better. God bless you. And the Amati party kicking four at $6. It's a pretty good weekend all around. So yeah, awesome. we checked out the previews. Go back and have a historical look from the weekend because we've actually done pretty well. Stats guy nailed the Hawthorne Gold Coast game. Other than the yep. fact that uh, other than the one to thirty nine, yeah, they that doesn't dropped matter. off in the last quarter, but that's all right. Yeah, we got that. Uh, I think the only one we sort of got wrong was the Fremantle Essendon game. It just goes to show, and we'll talk about that later. Being careful around the teams off the bye because yep. every team off the bye has zero and seven has lost. Collingwood and Adelaide don't count, and Sydney and St Kilda don't count because they're both off the bye. Every team off the bye that plays a team that uh, played the week before played has the week lost. Before. So. A couple of interesting matchups this week, I'm yeah. sure that we will talk about. Yes. But it is the Code Bet Daily. That's what we're here for. Codes, bets, and daily. Player props, mm. game picks, best bets. No rate my multi. It's Monday. Let's be honest. There is not a lot going on at the moment <laughs> we'll in the world. Some. Mondays are pretty tough. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at the Ashes and an AFL future they've been banging on about for about six weeks now. Stats guy, what have you got? Yeah, a bit of Ashes as well because that starts again this week. Is some MLB, which I smashed on the weekend, which I'll talk about in a Did second. Did you get and the 23-nil one, right? Yeah, 25-1 okay. to one in the end. 25-1, <laughs> yeah. to one. nice. Yeah, I couldn't believe nice. that. And then uh, another Wimbledon pick, just a bit of a value. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And also, if you did listen to Friday's show where we talked about uh, Declan Rice going to Arsenal, he was, yes. what, 275 at that? He is now a dollar forty to go to Arsenal. Ooh. So if you had a bet there, maybe now is the time to have your 10 bucks on Manchester City just in case Arsenal somehow <laughs> stuff it up. I think that'll get it. Increasingly likely, as we said on Friday, that Declan Rice will be an Arsenal player by the end of this week. Absolutely. Anyway, Player props, one or two player performance looks for this week. I'm going to keep mine nice and simple. I'm looking at the Ashes on a Wednesday at Lords. Travis Head, over 27 and a half runs in the first innings. Yep. Uh, of course, this test taking place at Lords. Look, in five of his last seven innings, he has cleared this 27 and a half nice and easily. You have a look at the two times that he hasn't gone over. It's been in a second innings when Australia have been pushing for runs or uh, trying to chase a victory, and we know how Travis Head goes about it. He just throws the willow at it. So goes, yeah, attacking, five, yeah. Five of seven, the two times he has it, has been in the technically Australia's second innings, the third or fourth innings of the game. So, look, I'm happy to take him over that 27 and a half at $1.83. This one could yeah, be done true. and dusted in about 15 minutes the way he goes about it. I'm going to keep it nice and simple because I yep. believe at some stage this week, either tomorrow or Wednesday, once hashtag Hamez Clementes uh, awakens from his meat slumber, we will probably <laughs> yeah. be doing an all-ashes game. 
But a buck sure 83 will, yeah. for Travis Head over nice. 27 and a half runs in the first innings. Go for it, stats guy. Also, yeah, I don't mind that Travis Head one. I think you'll like the small boundaries at Lords. You can hit a few few sixes, I reckon. Uh, I'm having a look at another Square Aussie of the batsman. Wicked, maybe. Square of the wicket, just roll down that hill. <laughs> He'll get some easy boundaries. I think Steve Smith will also make some runs. Uh, very, very rarely in his uh, in the last five or ten years has Steve Smith not made runs in a whole test match, only making 16 in the first inning, six in the second innings. I think uh, he's going to absolutely bounce back in the second test tier. He loves playing at Lords, averages uh, 55 at Lords. He's got a couple of 50s and 100 there. Just suited to the uh, pitch there. As, as you talked about uh, the other week, a lot of it, uh, the wickets have come from pace bowlers, a bit bouncy, a bit, bit faster this pitch compared to your other uh, English pitches which swing a bit more just a bit more like Aussie conditions so I think Smith will really like that he doesn't mind a pull shot he can use his cut shot I think he will use that bounce to his advantage uh, yeah he's he just loves playing there he said uh, multiple times uh, that he just loves the short boundaries he always wants to get up on that on that uh, on a board. Just yeah, I think a lot of players think that obviously the home of cricket, people call it so things like that. I think he'll just absolutely dominate and bounce back in this test. Uh, and he's played aggressive the last couple of times he's played at Lords. As I said about those short boundaries, I think he'll just come out really aggressive and easily clear that. He's, his over under is a bit more than Travis said, obviously. Uh, he's in amazing form over the last couple of years. So over 38 and a half is his over under. I think he's going to clear yep. that. I think the safe one of the three, I, I'm going to say, is 50 plus at $2.10. Uh, and then 100 plus is 375, which I thought was a little short for, for a ton, which is not easy to get in the ashes. But I think my probably my best bet out of those ones would be the 50 plus at $2.10. I think he's going to, yeah, steer the ship in that uh, third, fourth position for Australia and, yeah, do, do really well in the second test. Yeah, nice, nice and simple. I like it, I like it a lot. Match game picks, we'll just keep rolling here. We're going to go for a world record code bet daily today. <laughs> uh, I am looking at the first test and keep it nice and simple. We're going to win. Why yep. won't we win? We I have so, an yeah. amazing record at Lords. 39 test matches at Lords, Stats Guy. And I know you've probably looked at the run sheet, but how many times have we lost at Lords? Oh, I genuinely haven't even looked at this yet. I, uh, I th- I'm not too sure. I thought it'd be pretty close between England and us, but obviously not the way you. We have doing. lost seven times at Lords in 39 wow. tests. Wow! Quick side note: four of those losses were in the 1800s. <laughs> we have lost at Lords three times since the 1900s. <laughs> 1900. So that's in 123 crazy. years, we have lost at Lords thrice. That's nuts. There we go. That's nuts. Why are they still playing it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, as you mentioned, Steve Smith's record uh, at Australia at Lord, sorry, is one of the key talking points for me, yep. averaging fifty four point four two runs. Yep. Now, for all this bull crap that England, <laughs> ah, we have the advantage. Ah, yeah. we're in their Australia. You lost. Yeah. <laughs> ah, we. They only won because they started playing like us. You know what? The scoreboard says <laughs> yeah. one nil. Matt Cullen's just pointing to the scoreboard. Ollie Robinson yeah. just talking crap every interview. And then Ian and- Bell, bloody <laughs> Sherman from American Pie, going, oh, <laughs> England, England have the mental advantage. I'm thinking Australia going around going, Yahoo, we won this test match. We're up 1-0. I don't think yeah. Australia is scared. It's like, well, no we, we won. Shut up. Like, it's honestly the shut up, nerd. Look at the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah. If we go up 2-0 here, this could be an, this could be the Glenn McGrath 5-0 call. Like, I get it, basketball, this and that. You still lost. Yeah, like, it was really I, close. That's why you still yeah, think but they'll bounce you still back. Lost. They still like, lost. How yeah. can you have the mental advantage when you yeah. lose? Yep. Oh, you know what? We had to go down 1-0 at home <laughs> to get the advantage. No, you didn't. Shut no. up. <laughs> yeah. Australia's record at sense. Lords is amazing. We've lost three times there since since the, the clock struck 1900, you know, 123 years ago. <laughs> uh, I think we'll win. Go up 2-0. We're $2.15 to win it. I $2.15 like it. again. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I don't get it. Anyway, yep. we're going to win. Nice. Perfect. All right. I'm going to yeah, jump a bit different sport here. MLB, uh, the Major League Baseball in America, the LA Angels taking on the Chicago White Sox tomorrow morning. Now, I just got to touch on the bet I did the Angels to beat the Rockies at the minus one and a half. Well, that easily cleared when they won 25 to one uh, over the weekend. It was a franchise record. I think you just brought it up before. They were up 13. Yeah, I saw that score. I'm like, I hope that's I, the one Stats Guy talked about. It was. And I, I can't believe they won 25 to one. Absolute yeah, record. So many records were broken. You'd be annoyed they, if you took the under. I know. Surely no one's taking the under in this one. You shouldn't really take an under in ages game. They've just got so many good hitters. They scored 13 runs in the third innings alone. So I think, I, yeah, Rockies fans would have been absolutely, uh, yeah, not, not happy at all there. Uh, but it's just to do with all the stars they have. I think I talked about it the other day. The new Babe Ruth, they're calling him. Shohei Otani, he's leading the league right. in home runs. He's also pitching for him every few games. That's just unbelievable. He's got 25 home runs leading the league there. And then you, I've got former MVP Mike Trout. Isn't far behind with seventh in the league in home, home runs. So they've got two guys in the top seven. They can just hit runs on any opponent. 
and absolutely dominate. Uh, the White Sox have struggled, won uh, eight less games this season than the Angels, and the Angels won this matchup 12-5 in the last meeting. I actually didn't look at the over, but I think it would be about over nine runs or 10 runs in this match. So I think easily clear the over the form the Angels are in. Uh, the Angels have won six of their last nine games, look unstoppable. With the bat, I don't even care what they do with the, with the pitching and things like that in the field because their batting is just going to absolutely tear this one up. So just head to head, Angels are a dollar seventy three, and then that minus one and a half again the line. If they can score twenty five runs and clear the minus one and a half, then I'm easily taking in this one. So that minus one and a half for uh, Angels is two dollars thirty five on Labrox. I think they can easily clear that one again. Nice, nice. I don't mind it at all. All right, best bets today, tomorrow, or whenever. Going back to the well stats guy. Yep. After the weekend's results, there was a couple of, well, not upsets, but just the way the permeations of this AFL season is going where- You can see where teams top, are at. The top three and and Melbourne, I would say, looks locked in. You think it's going to be Collingwood, Port, one of them will run top two, Brisbane a third, and the Ds will probably Melbourne, still yeah. fall into fourth. I think so, yeah. You don't feel super confident about the Demons at the moment. Yeah. So, and then you have a look. I can't even remember. Like, you've got St Kilda- Adelaide, the Western Essendon. Bulldogs, Geelong, oh. Essendon lost. Fremantle. So many inconsistent teams. Yeah. You can't trust Gold Coast because of how they put up their performance last week. GWS, yep. they're off the bye this week, as are Richmond. The Swans, like uh, that percentage boost could be very, very important if they start, if they Not get wrong. on a run as well. If they knock off Geelong this week, you're like, oh, okay. Because I had a quick look. If Even if the Swans, those Port Adelaide and St Kilda losses, if the Swans won those games, they'd be fifth right now. Yeah, that's crazy. So and that shows close, you yeah. they're in, what, 13th? That shows you how tight this ladder is. So yep. going with that, I'm going with a team that lost on the weekend to miss the top eight. I've been yelling about it all year. I don't gonna... trust the Saints, yeah. yeah. Thank you. St. Kilda to miss the top eight at $2.15 with Bet365. As we've said most of the year, like they've surprised us. They've done what Ross Lyons' team do. They start off really well, which is what St. Kilda did last year. They did last but year. Their game plan is now very boring and predictable, and any decent team with a bit of speed can run through them. They're not yep. much. Uh, they're not going to play much better than what they showed against Brisbane. I reckon that was the full St Kilda there, and Brisbane sort of, you know, splattered and spurted their way to a victory. I'm getting in now. Like they're going to win this weekend against West Coast. Let's be honest. But yeah, do, do, like it feels weird. You look at this and go, St Kilda aren't going to win by a hundred. They'll win by like seventy, and it'll be like. Yeah. It'll be like 99 to 20. And it'll be like, it's oh, a classic was... Ross Lyon team. Just focus on defense and come, the offense will come, but it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I've had a look. There's a game against North Melbourne coming up. They're probably going to beat you blocks. I think they've got Hawthorne probably, as well. Yeah. But, you know, Hawthorne. They're, they're, Oak's, Oak's already beat them. Hawthorne are like yeah. a roller coaster this year. So who knows? Uh, yep. I think four more wins for St Kilda looking at their draw for the rest of the year. That gets them at 12 and 11. That hmm. is really, really like, uh, you don't not know. Not on the given, edge, yeah. Yeah, right on the edge because it's like you have a look. Fremantle, Richmond, Geelong, Sydney can all make the eight with their draw. I yep. don't think GWS can keep up what they've been doing. I don't think uh, Gold Coast will make the eight. Yeah, either. I'd like love Gold Coast, but Carlton. I don't think so. Carlton, yep. like who knows? And that's the thing. Like Carlton, GWS, Gold Coast can all knock off anyone bar Collingwood and Port Adelaide the way they're going. Yep. Uh, Geelong and Sydney have a way better percentage as well. Like you're looking at like – uh, this is the weekend where St Kilda need to absolutely kill a team to really help their percentage. The Swans went up 15% for their win on Saturday yeah, that's night. That's crazy. Like, so everyone who's got a game against West Coast, it's got to be foot to the throat. Like Essendon as well as another team that their 60-point win could come back and bite them on the ass later in the year. Yeah. Uh, I don't think, yeah, as I said, I don't think we're going to see any more improvement for St Kilda. St. Kilda. Their draw just, it just doesn't fill me with confidence. $2.15 for them to miss the eight from here is a $2. great 15, bet. yeah. And as a side note, uh, halfway through the game on Saturday night, I took $6 for the Swans to make the top eight. So, $6? Did they yeah. drop uh, after the game a little bit? or No, nah, still 6 bucks. Six, okay, that's pretty good. So the market expected them to win and they won. But just as a quick – obviously, I am a Swans fan. That's, you know, very yeah. obvious. Yeah, I don't know if like, I can trust them yet, but – But it's also yeah. like, oh, you only beat West Coast. But it's like, yeah, but look at the way that they did it. That forward line looked fantastic. You yeah. had Errol – it looks so great. much better without Buddy, which is sad. Well, but it's Cal- true. Callum Mills, Callum Mills was back. He was fantastic, and he didn't didn't play out the third uh, halfway through the third quarter. They subbed him off. Joel Amati sat on the bench for the last quarter because it's about you know mate, managing those injuries on the way back. Yep. And Tom McCartan had twenty touches in the VFL, and he's going to come back this week against the Jeremy Cameronless uh, 
Geelong, which is like, oh, this could be the this is that game. It's like the winner of Geelong and Sydney Big game probably right? makes the eight. So mm, sure. we'll talk about that later in the week. But oh man, the AFL, it's getting very tight around that sort of fifth to thirteenth range. I can't ra- wait for it. So check out the article that'll be uploaded today, codebet.com.au for Perfect. the AFL Premiership odds update. I will say Melbourne still stink, but they're still <laughs> gonna make the top four and I will make some bold prognostications. Anyway, nice stats guy, what have you got for your best bet? Bit of uh, Wimbledon. I talked about the women's. I think the women's draw is going to be a bit more exciting as uh, the you get a bit more value there. But uh, I said the other day I wasn't going to go against Djokovic, but I'm going to have a look at uh, another winner in the men's. Why men's are you singles. Your stats guy? <laughs> I, I think Djokovic can still win, obviously, because he's amazing. But if, if anyone's going to beat him, it's going to be Carlos Alcaraz. Uh, he just jumped back up to number one in the world last night. He won his first uh, tournament of, uh, ever on grass. So he won in Queens, okay. which is the major warm-up tournament to Wimbledon. A lot of the good players are playing in that. So a lot of people, uh, he's just dropped in odds. I think he dropped a dollar overnight. He was $6 down to $5 now. Djokovic is $1.60. Because he won, wins a tournament, everyone's like, whoa. Yeah, he's well, he's gone back to, only up to number one. He had some cramping issues in the French Open when he played Djokovic, and I was everyone was a bit worried about that for a 20-year-old to be having cramping issues and I pulling out a game. a salt tablet? Yes. So I think apparently he's got over that. He's won a tournament, and he's just in unbelievable form. Uh, he's beaten Sitsipas, Sina, Fritz, uh, and I think uh, Tiafo as well in the yeah. last couple of months, who are all in the top 10 now. He's just just can beat everyone. Just needs to get past that uh, Djokovic. Uh, obviously, he's probably the goat of the of the of tennis, and yeah. But his speed and power, Alcaraz, is unmatched on the men's tour. He can just run all day, hit winners, uh, and I don't think that cramping that he had in the last tournament is going to happen again. I think they're just going to get through that. They've probably put so many things into place because it was a horrible way to go out of the French Open. Uh, he's got yeah, a- amazing ability to hit winners, powerful serve. It will, it will cruise through the first like four rounds, I reckon. Okay. Easily make it to the semis. Uh, just yeah, it all if depends it comes on his draw, though, doesn't it? Like he can get a real tricky draw somewhere. Yeah, I think he's still better than everyone, uh, and he's probably even to Djokovic. So if he can get past okay. those first three rounds pretty easily, which I think he will, it just depends if he can beat Djokovic. If anyone can, I think it's Alcaraz, the young guy. He's just amazing, so quick. So outright winner for him to win the men's singles at Wimbledon is five dollars. Just a bit more value rather than that dollar sixty for Djokovic. If you yeah, want to find some value on the men's side of the tour. Aggressive. I don't mind it. Yeah, Good stuff yeah. there, Stats Guy. Well, yeah. that is Code Bet Daily done and wow. dusted for Monday, all done by 9.15. All right, Stats Guy, you've got some work to do. <laughs> I've got some work to do. I also have some wrestling to watch, so I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> nice. We should all be back on deck tomorrow, I believe, in the studio. Hopefully, the yes. lights have fixed itself over the weekend. Uh, Gerald will give us a thumbs up there in the chat, and we may not be on those super uncomfortable uh, spinny <laughs> chair things that you nearly fell off the other day. And I yeah, I did. In my buttock. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, get it right around the show, please. And thank you. Subscribe on all your podcast apps. So this will be on its own on the Apple Podcast and Spotify's. Absolutely. But you can see all the other episodes that we've got flowing through. Uh, AFL and NRL have their own slot on Spotify, as does EPL, but we're on a hiatus at the moment. Obviously, we'll actually come back and do a mega, mega EPL season preview. Can't wait. Mark us in for that one as well. Uh, but yeah, give us a five-star rating. Tell me that I suck, that you hate me, that I wear the same hat every episode while I'm at home. Tell Stats Guy that he, that everyone knows he went to New York once, given the fact that he's wearing a Yankees hat right now. Uh, tell James to do some work. But anyway, like, review, and star it. Anyway, give us a follow on all of our socials, Facey, IG, Twitter, TikTok. Hopefully, we're going to be doing some more fun stuff over TikTok now that we've got our own studio yeah, and some green good. screens. We have... We have a lot of ideas. Um, I think Homie's getting overexcited of the stuff that we can do together. Shout out to Homie. Send <laughs> any questions via the socials, any bets. Hello to Mark McCallion. I didn't yell about the Western Bulldogs this week. Yeah, I haven't for a while. Got yeah, away with good. one. Yeah, no, well, they had the buy. <laughs> True, yeah. Uh, that's it, I think. Uh, thanks, that's awesome. guy. Thank you. That was good fun. Yeah. Thanks to Geraldo for producing. Uh, shout out to Leo, social dude. Hopefully he got my message that I sent in the Slack chat yesterday. That's <laughs> right. I'm always thinking, always trying to do stuff. Uh, thanks to me for hosting once again and getting well through done. it in under 20 minutes. <laughs> what do we say here, stats guy? Gamble responsibly. May all your picks come in. Happy punting. We'll catch you tomorrow. It's Code Bet Daily. Out. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.